Hello and welcome to the HeartFit Clinic. My name is Diamond Fernandez and I'm your founder and director of the HeartFit Clinic. And today what I want to talk to you about is should you take a cholesterol lowering drug? And that's a common question that we get. So today I'm going to talk to you about whether you should take a cholesterol lowering drug if you have not had a heart attack or stroke. But let's talk about that part for a second. When we go to your doctor's office, they can, they can do some cool things. They can check your cholesterol. And it's not about just checking your cholesterol. It's about looking at a few things with your cholesterol. So when we look at total cholesterol, um, you know, it doesn't matter what the cholesterol is in terms of the total cholesterol. It really determines on what the breakdown of that cholesterol is. So it's broken down, I call them into basically three things here. So um, when you actually look at it, it's actually broken down into three things. So when we look at it, we have what we call the good cholesterol, the HDL, the LDL, and then we have the ugly, I call it the triglycerides. And when you go look at that profile, a lot of doctors are just concerned about this number right here, the LDL cholesterol, and if that's too high, then we decide, okay, uh, as, family, as a family doctor, we decide, we're like, okay, maybe we should consider a cholesterol-lowering drug. And it's because a study that came out, it was a number of years ago, that showed the benefits of taking or lowering LDL cholesterol. But I'll go through those numbers here in a second, and you can decide whether it's a good idea or not. So when we look at um, HDL cholesterol, it comes in two different shapes and sizes, actually a little bit more, but we'll call them, just for argument's sake today, small and large. And LDL also gets broken down into small and large. I'm going to do that the opposite way around, but uh, large and small. And so when we look at that part of it, HDL comes in two different sizes. LDL comes in two different shapes and sizes. And so really what we should be concerned about is the small cholesterol. Because the small cholesterol is the one that is atherogenic or plaque causing. And so just looking at LDL cholesterol, and if we were trying to lower, because the large cholesterol doesn't do anything that's bad. And really it's, I'll get into that part of it in a bit, but um, and HDL cholesterol, the good cholesterol, is only looking at the large side of things. So um, it's the large side of things that's actually a good component of, of uh, HDL cholesterol. So should you take a cholesterol lowering drug? Well, let's go through the numbers here. I'm going to just uh, erase all this here. So should you take a cholesterol lowering drug? Well, there's this study that came out, it was a number of years ago, and it showed you can reduce your cholesterol by, uh, or reduce your risk of a heart attack or stroke by 36%, which sounds really cool. And the study goes like this. They took 10,000 people, and 10,000 people in this study is, is a quite a bit a big of a study. And they split them off into two different groups. Ones that were taking the drug, so we'll call them the positive group, they were actually taking the drug, and 5,000 people who thought they were taking the drug, also known as what we call a placebo. And then there's a positive event that happens and a negative event that happens. Positive meaning not good, a heart attack, stroke, or cardiac arrest, or something to that effect, and a negative event. So a negative event obviously is a good thing in this, uh, that side of things. So the people that were taking the drug, I'm going to keep the numbers simple so we can do some simple math here. 100 people had a heart attack, stroke, or positive event that happened in spite of taking the drug. That means that 4,900 people did not. And now, in the people who thought they were taking the drug, 150 people had a heart attack, stroke, or a heart problem, a uh, uh, death and whatnot that came from that, from taking the drug, or, or from not taking the, the good drug. And they found that 150 people had a, a problem. So when we actually calculate this risk out, this 100 actually ends up being 2% of that population, and 150 ends up being 3% of that population. So how uh, companies report back to us is, is, a, is a little tricky and it's a little bit of marketing. I mean, there, there's some drugs that are really good for you and I think the numbers get kind of skewed a little bit. So it's something what we call relative risk. And relative risk is calculated the difference between those two. So it's 2% divided by 3%, which is actually um, 0.66 or we'll call it 66%. And what we do is we want to take the reverse of that, so we go 1 minus that number, which actually ends up equaling 
So what we find out is that there's a, the number's gonna be a little bit different from what the slide I just showed you, but there's a 34% reduction in a heart attack, stroke, or death, which sounds really cool if you wanna take that drug and play those odds, but it's not really the truth. And this is, this is something that kind of bugs me that way. And really the question that you should be asking is uh, the number needed to treat, or what we call the absolute risk. What is the absolute risk that can have when we look at reducing the risk of a heart attack or stroke. So by taking this drug, the, the placebo drug, the, the cholesterol-lowering drug, we found that 2% of the people had a problem in spite of taking that drug. And 3% of the people had a problem who thought they were taking the drug. So really the differential between these two is 50 people, which ends up being 1%. So the absolute risk is 1%. And therefore, the big number that you should ask your doctor is the NNT. And the NNT is the number needed to treat. How many people has to walk into a doctor's office for one person to benefit? And so I can go through different scenarios. When you look at uh, you know, a bacteria infection, 11 people have to, or sorry, yeah, 11, with 11 people walking in through a doctor's office, 10 people can have a positive, a good outcome from that aspect of it. So it's successful 10 out of 11 times, which are very good odds of taking a medication. Here, the number needed to treat is 100. So basically, for every 100 people that walk through a doctor's office, one person is going to be a benefit in taking that drug. Those aren't the, the best odds. Now, the number needed to treat has improved a little bit here and there, but how much more? Like maybe I think the best trial I've seen is 89 on a preventative basis. So it's 1% or 1 point and change percent. And there's a lot more you can do to reverse or prevent your risk of a heart attack or stroke. And that's what we focus on with the HeartFit Clinic. So first, it's important to know whether you need a cholesterol-lowering drug and to also determine some options. What are your, all your options out there? And that's what we do at the HeartFit Clinic. So understand your risk and we look forward to helping you live happier, healthier, and longer.